Welcome folks to the second part of this video which deals with the history of transmission lines. I think it is, uh, as I mentioned before, it's important to, to know a little bit about the history of uh, what we see every day in uh, our everyday life. So getting back to the topic, both ideologies DC and AC have uh, their own problems to face and solve internally. Edison had the problem that DC had very short range and soon will not be possible to cover the, the low demand because uh, it needed a large amount of money to install more generation facilities. So the size of the service capacity and therefore of customers uh, was a small and with many financial problems to expand. On the other hand, Tesla had the advantage that ACES system was feasible to work with high voltages and will be able to energize not only New York City and nearby areas, but had the potential to energize the entire East Coast and Central of the country with, uh, with few generation facilities. However, uh, when working with high voltages, Tesla had the problem of public safety because uh, AC was capable of killing any human being so that he could not compete with a, with a system putting the population at risk. Tesla had to find a way to be able to transmit electric power over long distances based on high voltage but make it safe enough for the final supply to the customers. So he had to find a solution to this problem and fast. In Budapest, Hungary, there were two other key characters so that actual electrical systems are safe for the public and few or nothing is mentioned about them. Lucien Gaulert and John Gibbs, French and English uh, respectively. They were the ones who, for the first time, envisioned a device that work with uh, multiple windings, which uh, will be similar to what we know today as a, as a water pump, but for electrical application. The electrical transformer. Subsequently, this principle will be used by Hungarian engineers Mixa Derry, Otto Titus Blathy, and Karoli Sipernowski, who uh, perfected this device in 1885 and called it the DBZ model uh, because of the last name of uh, its inventors. So the parents of Galler and Gibbs, as well as the DBZ model, were purchased by George Westinghouse, who in turn and trusted its uh, redesign for commercial use to the American physicist William Stanley in 1886. So uh, Stanley found a way to turn that transformation device into a powerful equipment capable of raising the voltage produced on the generation side to be sent at great distances to the receiving side in which the lethal high voltage will be reduced to a level that will be safe for both industrial and domestic use. The key element was born so that the transmission of uh, AC electric power was possible and safe. The power transformer and with it another industry was born. Power substations. Edison, on his end, with the purpose of uh, eliminating his competitor, Nikola Tesla, and his AC philosophy, received from the government a request to develop an, an execution system for, for prisoners sentenced to death in an instant and without pain because um, they wanted to replace the hanging rope because it was a very violent way to be executed. Uh, so Edison had 
the vision to show something that was an instant death based on the rival technology, alternate current, and in this way prove to the public the danger of alternate current. On August 6th, 1890, in the prison of Auburn, New York, will be used for the very first time the electrical execution chair and its first victim will be the homicide convicted William Kemmler at the age of 30. This was a, a sad and horrible episode in the development of transmission lines as Kemmler was subject to the application of high voltage throughout his body. At 6.38 a.m. he entered into the executions room and before sitting down, uh, he, uh, he addressed to the audience by saying, Gentlemen, I wish you good luck. I think uh, I go to a good place and I'm ready to go. While the brass were being placed, William will tell the officer who was preparing him Take it easy and do it correctly. I'm not in a hurry. Officer Durston said very kindly, Goodbye, William. And the switch closed. A voltage of a thousand volts, 1 kV, passed through uh, William's body. It was believed that he had died immediately from the discharge, but uh, when Dr. Edward Charles Spitzka checked him, he noticed that William was still breathing. So a second discharge was ordered, but now with two KBs, 2,000 volts. Immediately the place was filled with a horrible smell that was impossible to breathe and after 17 long seconds William Kendler had died in a more horrible and violent way than if he had been hanged. Due to uh, this tragic event Edison was directly uh, related with and turned into a backdraft against him since Nikola Tesla and his AC was not related in any way with this event. In another episode, in parallel, on the US-Canada border, the Niagara Electric Company envisioned a massive energy generation system, taking advantage of the immense flow of the Niagara Falls to build what will be the first hydroelectric plant on a large scale will be the Adams Hydroelectric Plant built in 1895 in honor to the entrepreneur Edward Dean Adams who had the courage to risk capital for the construction of a project of great magnitude. The Niagara Electric Company had a great dilemma decide the type of generators and there were only two options alternate or direct so a bid invitation was sent to both George Westinghouse and JP Morgan to compete for what will be the final and decisive battle for the supremacy in the electrical industry not only for that time but for life each uh, entrepreneur began to prepare their offers, Westinghouse and Tesla, together with the incorporation of the transformer to their system, set up an offer based on increasing the voltage at the output of the turbines in order to transmit the energy over long distances and then reduce to the distribution level and be uh, delivered for industrial and domestic users. JP Morgan 
realizing that DC could not compete technically against AC due to the uh, limitation in transmission distance, began to have talks with his teamwork without including Edison. That is, JP Morgan instrumented the way to eliminate Edison from the competition for the Niagara project and thereby get him out from the electrical industry. In 1892, JP Morgan merged the companies Edison Electric and Light Company and the Thomson Houston Electric Company to create today's well-known company of General Electric. So finally, the contract was awarded to George Westinghouse, who was in, uh, in huge financial problems and uh, was unable to cover the payments of, uh, of the patents and commissions for Tesla's inventions. So, uh, because of this situation, JP Morgan pushed Westinghouse to give him control of uh, Nikola Tesla's patents, putting the implementation of his S system at risk. As uh, mentioned at the very beginning of uh, this video, Tesla was characterized as a person who, before pursuing wealth, he preferred the good for humanity and made the difficult decision to renounce the payments that corresponded to him for his contracts with the Westinghouse. Unfortunately, that was the only way to save his company and with it, the implementation of the ACE system as the standard that uh, we know until today and on which uh, all the systems are based for generation, as for transmission and transformation in the world. Upon completion of the construction of the Adam hydroelectric plant, the first uh, AC transmission line in the US would put into service carrying 37 megawatts at the amazing 11 kbs, two phases and 25 hertz in frequency with a length of 25 miles reaching Buffalo, New York in 1895. Tesla, at the end, managed to see how his greatest dream uh, materialized, but he saw it from the farthest bleachers, as he never saw any kind of economic reward for his great inventions. Nikola Tesla died on January 7, 1943, in the same way he had lived in his childhood, alone and penniless. A very sad and unfair ending for someone who history has not expressed as much as his competitor, Thomas Edison. As of that moment, JP Morgan, heading General Electric, completely changed his philosophy, adopting the AC model and invested in numerous projects in the US, becoming the largest electric company in the world. With this, he defeated another important rival, John D. Rockefeller, who saw the total fall of kerosene as means of illumination, but we'll get into another stage much more important and much more lucrative business which goes on today, a substance that was the waste of producing kerosene, which is extremely volatile, and nobody knew what to do with it, and they named it as gasoline. And with it, it will raise another character, Henry Ford and the automotive industry. So, um, this was the story of how we came to the technology in which power transmission systems are based worldwide and the basis of any other industry. If there is no power industry, there will be no automotive industry, no textile industry, no food industry, no agriculture, no electric trains 
or aviation industry, there will be no space industry and without it, the communications industry as we know it today, internet, email, WhatsApp, etc., simply wouldn't exist and the world in which we live in the 21st century will not be as we know it. All this thanks to the men who fought each other, each of them with their very own ideology that they defended until the very end. Nikola Tesla and Thomas Alva Edison. In the next video, we will see how this technology was expanded to other nations and continents to build up the way to the modern world. Thank you very much for your kind visit. Do not forget to subscribe, leave me your comments and likes. So, until next video, Transmission Lines Engineering TV, training to power the world.